So for us, the software has played a key role in our ability to deliver Moore's Law over a long period of time. So last year we had a t-shirt that said, do more with LabVIEW. I would like to suggest that we could make this t-shirt say, do Moore's Law with LabVIEW. <laughs> so. LabVIEW delivers the integration platform that truly assures that we can fully take advantage of Moore's Law. So we've seen, uh, we've talked about K true rocket science, kindergarten to the most complex physics applications. And once again, we have a, a, a physics uh, uh, meeting here where we're talking about some of the biggest and toughest challenges on the planet. And by this integration that we create with LabVIEW across multi-core, across distributed systems, we can make ever more powerful uh, systems, integrating time in it as well, in hardware and software. This is all about system level design, making a platform that increases the productivity and efficiency of your design, uh, where a small team can do a lot more. So uh, here's a way, uh, some years ago, I talked about the return of Edison, how we can create a platform that instead of needing this uh, very large team, and over time the teams got larger and larger and larger uh, to build these systems because of the complexity of detailed design of the circuits, the software and so forth, uh, we can, with a much smaller team, with a domain expert, whether it be a mechanical engineer, aerospace engineer, medical doctor, environmental engineer, biomedical engineer, all working to create a definition and then turning right around and implement it in LabVIEW. So a much smaller team uh, can build the systems. And that's exactly what we're seeing happen. It's amazing. Every day I see an example of somebody who's taken our platform and done something truly incredible. And today you'll be uh, seeing some of those on stage. So once again, we're able to deliver the return of Edison, the ability of innovators to be innovating and be very successful in their invention process. Now you can ask, what about high volume designs? Well, we're working closely with uh, companies like Mentor and Synopsys to uh, create a continuity to their products. So if you want to go to very high volume design custom uh, ASICs and the like, you have a path to do so. That's a, uh, goal we have at this point, we'll be working on that. So basically creating a way to operate which is substantially more efficient in the design process than the traditional path. So we've spoken in the past about graphical system design, the, the integration of all these components for both test and measurement and industrial embedded. So we've said we want to do for test and measurement what the spreadsheet did for financial analysis. We're doing that. We're clearly, clearly doing that. Now we've set a new goal to do for embedded what the PC did for the desktop, meaning key, uh, create a very powerful platform that gets reused over and over. Applications can be shared for many, many different, uh, by many users. Efficiency that comes from building this ecosystem. Last year we saw an example for high volume production test where Moore's Law was delivering 11x cost reduction, 16x power savings, a zero footprint test system, uh, which really, really showed the benefits that can come from uh, being able to apply Moore's Law in the most effective way. We see that test is, uh, continues to be a very important part of the overall design process. Toyota in, an article, Toyota in an article recently in Wall Street Journal said they're looking to build more prototypes, use more tests to ensure that their vehicles are the standard of quality they've been known, uh, known to have a reputation for. 
We also saw, obviously, in the case of the uh, Gulf oil uh, situation where it was clearly a not a enough test and online monitoring that was being done to make that system work right. Now, in terms of technologies, we continue to drive the technology to deliver Moore's Law. Things like our Flex Rio uh, creates an open ecosystem where uh, third parties can add modules. We can quickly uh, add modules to keep up with this very rapid pace of Moore's Law. Uh, we now have many different modules, and I can highlight, for example, the 32-channel 50 megahertz module that allows us to do things like ultrasound and uh, prototype these kind of systems. So it's uh, 250 megahertz, uh, four-channel board. So all these technologies are making it possible for us to get closer to the latest powerful a analog to digital converters and the like that are being created by the vendors who use Moore's Law to build our products. Our, th our third parties are also creating a long number of modules as well for this new uh, platform, and once again, delivering uh, the, the wide ecosystem that we like to enjoy. In the RF, we continue to use the latest A to D converters and latest uh, hardware to integrate with our LabVIEW platform for MIMO test, for RF record and playback, and software-defined radio applications. Our uh, compact Rio platform now has entered the mainstream. We've got a volume that's uh, ramped up very, very quickly because we're able to do many, many things. It's certainly been a, a great platform for invention with this combination of a real-time lab, FPGA, and the integrated I.O. right with the FPGA to create a really, really powerful platform taking advantage of Moore's Law and the FPGA. Now, often, you know, folks would say that these small systems can't be high channel count systems. I would like to uh, know how many folks have applications that exceed what we can do with our new Mixi Express chassis. We can support some 21,000 504 channels running at 8 kilohertz. So incredible capability. It's really a PCI Express lanes that make that possible. So there's a lots of capabilities in these small platforms. We don't need big high power systems to create these very high channel count systems. Often they can be done with these platforms with considerable reduction in power. So we also uh, uh, focusing a lot on time. Time has been integrated in our hardware since our first uh, G, uh, A to D converter board, D, uh, MIO boards back in 1987. And we continue to integrate it into our backplanes, into our products. Now we're integrating uh, 1588 software and hardware timing into our products. So LabVIEW now can have software time 1588 to millisecond level. And then with hardware timing, we can go to tens of nanoseconds synchronization to correlate across multiple units. So an incredible in integration of time and products. I'd like to talk about a few innovations we'll be talking about this week. One is our IP integration node in LabVIEW to streamline building the ecosystem of bringing in third-party IP into our FPGA solutions uh, with LabVIEW 2010. We also, on NI Labs, are making available the Xilinx core generator IP libraries, a long list of those, and this will uh, greatly help us speed up development times. And finally, a note on time, and tomorrow you're going to see a, hear a profound treatise from Jeff uh, on time, probably uh, something that will really stand the test of time in terms of being uh, very deep uh, description of it. We've talked about time at the global level with uh, GPS, time across backplanes, time in the time loop with LabVIEW. So time is very much a part of what we are about and creating a language with time integrated so to benefit in a time for innovation, cutting those cycle times and in innovation. So once again, it's about time, time for innovation. Thank you.